Hello, hello. My name is Eugene from Worker Bee Supply. We're a photography and video production studio here in Toronto. I'm really excited to share this video with you. Today, we're going to be doing a small DIY project and making some custom product photography backdrops. So we're going to be making three of them. I got three different surfaces. I'm using these foam, foam core sheets, but really you can use whatever you want, whether it's some cardboard or a piece of thin wood or plywood. We're gonna start with this super simple one with creating this sort of paper collage background. Then we're gonna move on to a colorful wavy geometric one. And finally, we're gonna wrap it up with this really cool textured wall kind of plaster effect. So without waiting any further, let's jump into the first one. All right. So for this one, we don't need a ton of stuff at all. All I'm gonna use is, of course, our illustration board or whatever surface you're gonna use. We're gonna use a glue stick. And then finally, we're gonna use a magazine. So it's got a lot of nice architectural photos. So I think I'm gonna go for the sort of like architecture contemporary theme. Um, but, you know, feel free to use an old book, a newspaper. It's really up to you what kind of thing you wanna kind of put on there, but it's really gonna determine the look of your final piece. So give it some thought. Okay, so first I'm gonna gonna go through this and rip out some of the pages that I wanna use. So I'm just gonna go through and find any like really colorful or kind of full image pieces and I'm just gonna rip them up. So now that we have a whole bunch of these papers, I'm gonna just lay down a sort of first pass on this with kind of things that maybe, you know, I don't care about the image as much, but I just wanna kind of fill all of this white space here. And I'm not gonna go kind of perfectly straight, you know, I want it to be a bit of a mix. And it's okay if some places it doesn't fully glue on because I'm actually gonna rip it a little bit at the end, kind of give more of like, uh, you know, peeled wallpaper sort of look. So, I don't know, for me, it's okay to get a little bit messy. Maybe you want it to be a little bit different, but really this is all up to you and the kind of look you're going for. So it's coming along pretty well. I think now we've got like pretty much the base down where everything is covered and there's no kind of white spaces peeking through. So really the way to think about it is that this is our background and now we're gonna be a little more selective, kind of finding just the right piece to put in a few different spots. I think the thing to remember about this is you can literally use anything you want. So some of the fun things to explore would be to make it all like monochrome using only black and white photos, uh, use only like bold headline text, it's really limited by your imagination and also the kind of thing that you're photographing that you want this to be the backdrop for. I think I'm just about done. My hands are covered in glue, so I know I must have done a good job. So this is my kind of collage style background. So I'm really excited to see what this looks like once we do a photo shoot on it. So using some TV magic, here it is. I love how this one turned out. What do you think? I really leaned into the textured, layered, kind of chaotic nature of our backdrop by using a prism when I was shooting and also layering a couple of images on top of each other in post. If you want to see how I did this, the kind of Photoshop aspect of it, check out our reel on Instagram. All right, moving on. For this next one, we're going to need a couple more things. And I'll be honest, out of the three, this is the most sort of experimental one for me. So we'll see how it turns out, but I think it should be pretty good. So we're gonna need, again, start with a base white foam pour. I also have a hot glue gun here heating up. I've got a ruler, a pencil, and I also have a few sheets of construction paper. To start, I'm gonna just mark off on my page while this kind of finishes heating up, or sorry, on my board here. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go like every two inches and make a line. So we'll just kind of measure all the way down. And I'm gonna do this on both sides. You just gotta make sure that, you know, you start measuring from the same direction. Otherwise, you might have a few issues. And we're gonna draw basically guides for our gluing so we can kind of get nice straight lines. So the idea now is to just put some glue one line at a time. And then I'm gonna take each paper and glue it on and then create a curve by buckling it and then put glue on the next line and sort of move down to get the sort of like undulating uh, wave is the general idea. We'll see how it turns out. So for the next one, I'm gonna go skip one and I'm gonna start down here. Just be careful, the hot glue does get quite hot. So when you're sort of pushing it down, uh, just be careful not to burn yourself. 
Now we have the main pieces uh, kind of put on. And as you can see, there's still quite a bit of space between them. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually just get a couple more of these sheets of paper and pop them in, in between these. And now I'm just gonna create some little quick tacks of glue on the pieces that you know I didn't glue down fully just to make sure they stay in place. They kind of stay in place on their own, but this will just make it a little more secure and so nothing pops out in the middle of the shoot. So I think this piece is done. Don't forget to turn off your hot glue gun, but yeah, I would love to know what you think. I think it turned out pretty awesome. It's gonna look really cool once we hit it with some light and do the product photography in front of it. But I think it's really cool and you can kind of create a lot of really nice patterns with color, with different textures of paper and materials. I think this one is gonna look really cool. Let's check it out. This one turned out so good. I really didn't know how it was gonna feel when it all came together, but I think we really got the look we were going for. It feels like almost like a theater curtain that's draped in kind of like unique way receding into the distance. And what I did with this backdrop is photograph it on a bit of an angle to give it a bit more of that depth. I'm always looking to add depth to our product images. And then finally, I lean into that theater feel by creating a bit of a vignette in post to give it almost like a spotlight effect. All right, two down, one to go. It's time for the final backdrop now. If you thought the last couple were a little too simple, this one, you're gonna have to take a little trip to the hardware store because you'll need a few things. So first of all, you're gonna need a putty knife. We're gonna use this to basically create the texture of the sort of plaster wall, concrete wall, sort of layers of paint on it, on this foam pour. And then we're also gonna need something to build up that texture. So I'm gonna try using wood filler here. You can also use speckling, um, anything that kind of will build up a dry, hard texture that you can kind of smooth around. Hopefully this will stick to this foam pour. I have a feeling it will, but we're gonna find out. Life's a big experiment. So why don't you join me? This is part one. We're gonna have to cover this in some sort of texture. You know, in part two, we're gonna move on to painting it and really bring it to life. So let's move into it. And I'm just gonna kind of grab a decent amount and just smear it basically all over this. The more texture and kind of creases you have, the better, because it's gonna dry, uh, you know, just like this, but we're gonna paint it. So any sort of ridges or bumps or valleys are gonna get picked up by the paint and it's gonna look really nice. So I'm pretty much done. I've got really great coverage across the whole piece. And I think we got some really nice texture in there. So essentially now all we have to do is let it dry. All right, so I think it's good enough for our purposes today. I probably blow dried it for maybe like 15, 20 minutes or so. Um, you can almost see the texture of the actual material kind of change as it really dries up. I do feel a little bit of give in some places, but for the most part, all these valleys and peaks are pretty kind of hard and stiff, which is what we want because we're gonna be applying paint to them with a brush and we don't wanna be like smearing it around. So at the moment, here's where we're at with just the wood filler on it. And again, if you use a different material or a different media, it'll take a different amount of time. You might get a slightly different look, but next we're gonna paint. In order to paint, you know, it really depends on the palette you're going for. So I wanna kind of like light, warm, yellowy look, maybe a little brighter in the middle to kind of create a sense of a highlight and kind of getting a little darker on the sides. So our base coat is down now and it's looking pretty good like this. But I think, you know, doing this, I'm seeing I'm getting a little bit too much green with the yellow. So I think I'm gonna add in a little bit of red into the color as I do the kind of sponging piece. Um, and hopefully that'll kind of give it a more consistent, warm texture. All right, so we got a lot of this, so I'm just gonna wipe this onto this brush, or sorry, onto the sponge. Keep this on the side for now. And I'm just gonna grab some more, and essentially I'm just gonna start sponging this all over this piece. And what the sponging does, it kind of, you know, tapers it nicely, but it also gives it a texture that's kind of cool, and you don't wanna overload the sponge you do kind of want it to be a little on the dry side. But essentially what this layer is doing is kind of like evening out all the tones and kind of giving us a bit more of a consistent look. I'm getting pretty close to finishing up and it's looking really good, I think. 
getting a nice sort of bit of a gradient in the middle. Nice mix of colors, really great texture when the light hits it. It's gonna pick all of that up. So my base coat is done. I've done the sponge effect as well. I kind of you know created a bit of a vignette with a highlight in the middle. So for the last bit, I'm just gonna do some dry brushing. So I'm gonna take a brush. I blow dried it as well, so it's nice and dry. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of color here. And the goal is not to get too much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of like lightly just go over some of the textures. It just accentuates all the textures basically. All right, I think we're done. So I really like how this turned out. The kind of dry brushing really added a whole bunch of texture to the piece. I think this is gonna re look really, really cool for a product shot. All right, let's see it. This one was all about texture and it really went after that in the lighting of the image as well. And again, with all of these, it's about matching your lighting and kind of positioning your products to the background. They really have to work together. So for this one, we used lighting at a very hard angle to the camera to really give these long shadows and we used some hard light with no diffusion on it. And then also we put some objects kind of in front of the light to create, break it up a little bit and create these like spilling light rays. I think it made for a really dramatic image and it contrasts really nicely with all the smoothness and kind of clean textures of the product. I really love how this turned out. So that's all of them. Here are all the images again, one, two, and three. I really love how this DIY project turned out and I think there's so much you can do with these three techniques, whether you go really big or keep it small tabletop scale like we did. If you're curious about these watches, they're made by our friends at Maker Watch Co. You should definitely give their Instagram a follow. They make really awesome products and have a really great story behind them and also give you a cool peek behind the scenes, which I know you love. So that's it for us today. I wanna know from you, what was your favorite backdrop? Which one are you excited to get out there and make? And if you go and make any of these yourselves, use them in a shoot, please make sure to tag us on Instagram. We're at Worker Bee Supply. I'd love to see what you do with these ideas. And if you like this kind of video in general, please let me know down in the comments and I'll make more of them. I really love kind of bringing the DIY, building, kind of making things for photography. And I'd love to share that with you. So that's it for us today. My name is Eugene from Worker Bee Supply. Make sure you hit subscribe if you want more creative videos about product photography and just running a creative business. That's what we're all about. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.